question is from DSA Inc. 213. What are the differences between a front and behind the head overhead press? Is one more beneficial than the other? Okay, so they both have unique benefits, but before we get into those... One uh, is more risky. Yeah, way more. So a, a front, a traditional front uh, overhead press with the bars in front, of your, in front of your head is far less risky than a behind the head uh, over overhead press. A behind well, the head overhead press well, requires a lot of good mobility. I was going to say you have to explain it. It wouldn't be if we all had healthy posture, yeah, right? If, if you yeah. could, is not if, the case. Yeah, if, I mean, if uh, and that's why we weren't taught it in any of our certifications. Like if mm -hmm. every national cert that I have, uh, every single one of them, none of them advocate. Oh, they for, avoid it like the yeah, plague. It's a it's a do not do type of deal, um, and so that's why I didn't I didn't teach it and I didn't do it myself for many years, which actually. Uh, probably did more harm than good for me, mm -hmm. and and the truth is, if if it hurts you or it, you, you can't do it with good form, don't do it. Yeah, until don't you can. don't do it till you can. But that's a great sign that you there's an area you need to work on. Totally, and it's yeah. it's the lack of shoulder mobility and probably thoracic mobility that is that is limiting you from being able to do that, which is an obvious thing since I think the percentage is somewhere between, uh, I want to say 65 and 80% of the population suffers from upper cross syndrome. Mm -hmm. So if a majority of the population have the rounded shoulders and the forward head, well, yeah, trying to take a bar behind your head. Without jutting your head forward and, and externally rotating your shoulders. And yeah, all kinds but of stuff. If, you, if you can do it, it's going to promote good shoulder mobility and thoracic mobility. So totally. The, so it's it's kind of like the uh the think of it the same way of like uh deep, doing a deep squat. Most people shouldn't do an ass to grass squat because they don't have the capabilities to do it because mm -hmm. their form is going to break down, they're going to feel it in their low back, they're going to fall way forward, but that's a, a sign that you should work on that. So I'm the, I was this person. Now what's cool, now that I've done all the work of working on my mobility for a solid year and a half or so, to get into a deep squat, now the only thing I need to do to keep mobility in my ankles and my hips is deep squat. Right, right, That's right. what's awesome is that, so if you can't do behind the neck presses right now, the real benefits of being able to do them is it promotes good shoulder and thoracic mobility, and that's an excellent thing. No, totally. Now, an overhead press is hard to do for the average person anyway. Right. It still requires work and mobility, and, and you right. take that behind the neck and you've just you know, exponentially made the exercise far more difficult. Now, that all being said, just like Adam said, if you can do them properly, if you have good control, good stability, I love behind-the-neck presses. It, it's a completely different type of form. I feel it in different parts of my shoulder. I go lighter. Because of the position that I'm maintaining, the pumps I get in my shoulder are phenomenal. I feel like I get less of the front part of my shoulder and a little more of the side of my shoulder when I'm pressing up, mainly because of the position that I'm trying to hold myself in. Mm -hmm. It was a favorite among bodybuilders back in the day. Back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, bodybuilders favored behind the neck press over four, over uh, you know just traditional overhead press. The overhead press didn't get popular in bodybuilding. It, well, it was popular in the, originally in the you know, 40s and 50s, maybe 60s. It didn't get popular again until relatively recently because you had bodybuilders like you know Jay Cutler who did standing overhead presses and of course whatever the top guy does everybody else does but for a long time it was all about behind the neck presses behind the neck pull downs you see Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo doing them like crazy I love them I have to go much lighter mm -hmm. so if I do an overhead press I'm gonna go the lightest I'll go with a barbell is 100 pounds. Is I'll go as heavy as 130 to 140 pounds. Yeah. When I'm behind the neck, I go 50, 60 pounds, and maybe 100 pounds at the absolute heaviest. Yeah, I would definitely put that as an advanced, you know, exercise to where it is something that you know is achievable and attainable, and it does provide you know value. Like it definitely promotes uh, you know a different stimulus for your muscles to respond to and to, and it's it, it does, you know, help your your shoulders build, you know, in a different way, but it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of prerequisites to even get close to be able to to, to be able to have access and also to control it properly. This is why I love the Z press. Z press. Is I a good fell start. in love with this exercise for this exact reason. It was around the time that I was working on this. Yeah, because when you first, it wasn't that long ago you first you started you started doing behind the neck presses. Right, because I couldn't. I, I like like many people, I couldn't I couldn't take the bar behind the back of my head without you know forcing my head forward. 
And what I loved about that, now, some of the, obviously, the prerequisites that Justin's talking about, you know, your wall circles, your thread right. the needle, your- uh, Even your doing the PVC pipe. Right, your, th- uh, your, um, your uh, handcuff to rotation. These are all great mobility exercises to do to start with uh, getting your, your in the right position. Then the exercise that I love to do to help me get to a place where I can do behind the neck presses is the Z press. And the two main reasons why that, one- uh, when you're in the Z press position and you and you press, which for those that don't know what that is, that's when you're and I like to do it inside the squat rack where I'm sitting on my butt and I use the and your uh, legs are straight out. Yeah, my legs are straight out and I use the guards on the squat rack, like you would for safety guards, to start the bar on there to where it's resting by my chest, and then you press up above your head, pull your head through the window, and the the key to this is the the stabilization at the top. So I when I'm teaching this to a client. Um, that I'm working on this with is we'll start really light and we start in the Z press, we press and completely extend all the way up and stabilize up there. That that stabilization with the bar completely extended above your head, your head pulled uh, through through the window, we say. like And that right there is a great place yeah. to start. This is also why, you know, I, I would do those like like one arm carries and stabilizing mm-hmm. like weight overhead carries. Uh, and then also, you know, because you need to learn that, that mechanism, that mechanism on packing the shoulder. So not just reaching out, but you have to anchor that too with your, with your shoulder blade. And so to be able to stabilize properly in your full lockout, being able to control the load, be able to decelerate it properly, bring it down nice and slow. And, and, you know, all these things involved, it, it takes some time and effort, but you definitely can build your way towards a nice solid, you know, behind the neck press. Well, yeah, and you, the, and the beauty of the Z press is that you can't cheat it and that's why i like it better than single arm exercises or machine or anything else you're trying it's 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 great for teaching it's almost cheap proof it it? is because it it, in order for you to stay upright you'll fall back and fully extend and to where the bar is above above almost or behind your head and your arms in line with your ears that's the the only way it works without you falling backwards. If you press and extend all the way and you're the type of person who arches the back and uses your chest to leverage up and you can't pull your shoulder blades back like Justin's saying, you will fall backwards. Mm-hmm. And so it's a great way to to teach those good mechanics. It's a I, I these are here's here's this is like to Sal's big argument on Instagram the last few days about, you know, here's a here's a good example of like this is where coaching comes into play for a really long time. Like if you were to do uh show somebody uh, the research on, you know, a Z press compared to a standing overhead press, which builds the most muscle in your shoulders, like Z press is going to lose. It's not a better movement in comparison to a standing overhead press where I can generate more force and I have and I have more. Yeah, but its value is not in building muscle in comparison to a exactly. Yeah. And so the, the, you know that's just something that you've learned from years of coaching people and knowing that trying that application to, of it right, getting clients to cue cue them the correct way to to do the movement properly. It's one of those little trainer tricks. You know I who love. you know who does uh, a version of that exercise that I've seen uh, done over and over again is uh, of that is uh, Olympic lifters. You ever seen Olympic lifters? Mm-hmm. They'll put the it's bar like across their press. traps. Yeah. yeah, like they finish this, like they're squatting, and then they pa and they press yep. it up and bring it back that's down. A, the that's traps. a move. What is that called, Justin? That's a move, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, like a, I mean, it's pretty much just like a push press, but it's like but from it's off the, the behind traps. the neck, yeah. and it's in a seated position. No, no, no standing. No standing. It's yeah. explosive. Oh, yep. oh you're yeah. saying if standing yeah, because you know when you're Olympic lifting, they have to be so good at balance at, at lining their body up straight up above their head with maximum weight. Yeah, they can't be forward an inch or back an inch, or they're going to lose the the lift. So that's one of their lifts. I seen I saw a video on YouTube of Mario Pujanowski. He was uh, mm-hmm. world's strongest man doing yeah. that with like three hundred pounds. Yeah, um, and that encouraged me to do a full range of motion behind the neck press. When you get really good mobility and control, bring the bar all the way down to your traps and press all the way up. The pump you get from that, right? It, but again, you got to do it right, otherwise you're gonna hurt yourself. But the pump you get from that is insane. It's one of the number one exercises that'll give me the best shoulder pump by far. 